We all rely on farmers and ranchers, but farming is riskier than other businesses out there. Crop insurance helps farmers manage their risk. With crop insurance, farmers put skin in the game by paying premiums and shouldering deductibles. That keeps taxpayers from having to pick up the whole bill every time disaster strikes. Today, about 90% of U.S. farmland is insured, providing $100 billion in protection to more than 130 different kinds of crops. It's a testament to the program's success. Senator John Bozeman from Arkansas, thank you for joining us. No, thank you so much for having me. For starters, can you tell us a little bit about if we were to take a drive through, through your home state, what kind of agriculture might we see? No, we've got a really interesting uh, state in the sense we can grow all kinds of stuff. We have the Delta, which is, again, Delta, very flat, lots of rice production there, soybeans, corn, things like that, really about everything, peanuts. Uh, you get into the, the southern part of the state and there's lots of timber and lots of forest, and so we have all of that kind of production. And then you get into the northwest part of the, the state, the central uh, northern part of the state, and you have a lot of uh, chickens, poultry, uh, lots of cattle, uh, so it's really a diverse state with all kinds of uh, various uh, crops and production. It's about 25 percent of our economy in the state, so it's, it's, it's huge. But in much of the state, much of rural Arkansas, and the state is, is pretty rural in itself, it's not 25 percent, it's probably 95 percent. So it's very, very important uh, to us, not only us, but rural America. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a, you're a former optometrist, and, mm -hmm. and I wonder with the, with the experience that you have both in optometry and with politics, I'd, I'd like you to assess America's vision right now. How, how, do, you, how do you think America is, is seeing its, uh, its future? I mean, does, does America need some readers or does it need full-on LASIK, would you, would you say? I'd say that's a good question. I'd have to think about it. But, uh, you know, we're plotting away, uh, trying to do the best we can. And uh, the good news is uh, I just came through a tour of southern Arkansas last week and the economy is picking up, unemployment is very low, all of those things are very positive so in that sense I would say that we're we're moving in the uh, moving in the right direction with our vision. Mm -hmm. Now one of the committees that you serve on here in the Senate is the Senate Agriculture Committee and uh, it, it's often been said that uh, farm policy is not as partisan as it is regional and, and then it's, it's different in that way from, from, from a lot of other political areas. You know, as being one of the only Southern members on that committee, is that, is that something you agree with? No, I agree with it totally and uh, you know in the South we, we irrigate, we fertilize and when you do that you're going to produce a crop. Uh, in the I states, Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, places like that, uh, where they don't irrigate as much, then, then you worry about a crop coming up. And so the needs are very different. And then we've got the Great Plains. Uh, so what you have to do is take care of everybody coming out of committee. The committee has to be united when they come out. If we're divided, and again, it's not Republicans and Democrats, it's the regions. But if we're not, uh, if we don't come out of committee United, it makes it very, very difficult to get a farm bill passed. Mm -hmm. So does that, that regional divide less so than a partisan divide? How does that change how you approach the Ag Committee as opposed to maybe some of your other committee work? Well, you know, the good, the good news about the, uh, the Agriculture Committee is, is that it, it works hard to get the regional differences, you know, done. But when you set that aside, then it is a, a very, very nonpartisan committee. Uh, it's everybody working together and, and you know for the benefit of uh, agriculture and then you also have the commodity uh, type uh, situation as far as food stamps things like that uh, some of the other committees i'm on environment and public works would be one that uh, it's an interesting committee because the uh, in that sense you are very very partisan as far as the environmental aspect but very very nonpartisan as far as Public Works. Uh, Jim Inhofe and Barbara Boxer uh, from California, Jim from Oklahoma a couple years ago got the reauthorization of the big highway bill done. Uh, they don't agree hardly on anything except for the fact that they feel like, uh, you know, that we need to invest in our infrastructure. So for you, I know a lot of people when they're talking about farm policy and thinking about farm policy, they have some some specialized areas that they that they're really you know particularly passionate about. Does that ring true for you as well? Well, in Arkansas, again, we're such a diverse state. I've really enjoyed. I, I used to have a bunch of cows, and my girls were 
active in 4-H and you know they showed up you know, in different places in the country and things like that. I'm probably one of the few people in uh, uh, Congress that has an AI certificate. You know, and I used to be the bull at our place for many years. So, you know, I'm certainly interested in that. I understand that aspect of agriculture. I've really enjoyed, though, the, the row crops. And uh, like I say, in Arkansas, we're so diverse. And then uh, we had a, uh, I spent a lot of time learning the timber industry. Bruce Westerman, uh, one of my fellow uh, cohorts in Congress, congressman from uh, southern Arkansas, uh, actually has a forestry degree. I think the only, only person in Congress to have one. And he's been a great mentor and, uh, again, just, just really diverse and, and really enjoyed all aspects. So outside of farm policy, you've been coming to, to Washington for a number of years now. What, are you, what would you say are some of your biggest goals in, in terms of the broader congressional, the broader legislative branch impact? What are some of the biggest, uh, biggest and most, most important things for you personally? Well, we have, you know, I'm on a number of committees. I'm on five, com five committees. One of those is the Appropriations Committee. Uh, I'm the chair of the Veterans Administration Appropriations part of things, which is so important to our country. I'm also on the authorizing committee of veterans. So that's a big part. We, we're blessed in Arkansas with having a number of veterans. Uh, and so doing our best to take care of them, make sure that, uh, that we're honoring the, the commitments that we made to them. Uh, along with that, uh, the environment and public works, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in, in infrastructure. Uh, doing our best to help the states, uh, help the country. And it all goes together, you know. We talk about ag, you know, infrastructure is so important. You know, you've got to have, they're talking about, uh, uh, you know, in the not too distant future, the population increasing dramatically in the world. You've got to feed those people, but you've got to have a mechanism to get it from the field to the port, which again is so important. You know, you know our inland waterways, all of that, our highways, the railroads. So all of these things run together, and uh, so I think you work on it as a unit. Mm -hmm. Now you've been in Washington since 2001, and uh, before in the in the House before you joined the Senate in 2011. So with a fair amount of experience in both chambers now, which uh, which chamber, which process would you say better suits uh, you and, and your your skill set and the way you like to work? Well, they're very different. In the House, I think there's a lot more camaraderie. In both in both. Uh, branches, uh, it's all about personal relationships, and that's really what this place is all about. So you work hard, uh, you know, uh, to build those personal relationships. The way you do that is, uh, you know, you, you come to the subcommittee hearings, you come to the full committee hearings, uh, you know, you're, you're, you do your best to, you know, support your chairman, you do your best to, to really uh, come up with the 80 percent that both sides agree on, work hard on those, and, and in my case, I think you move the 20% aside and work hard to get that 80% done. And when you do those kind of things, then you're successful in both, but uh, they're different institutions. Uh, I've, I've, I really enjoyed the house. I, I, I spend time going back and seeing my old friends that are running the place now, and then also, uh, you know, my new Senate colleagues. and. In the Senate, it's it's much more intimate in the sense you got a hundred people, about fifty Republicans, about fifty Democrats. You know, it's pretty evenly divided, uh, and so it's it's you know you have lunch together two or three times a week. It's almost like English class at high school. You know, you, all different personalities. You get to know them, and uh, and you know it's just important to uh, to build those relationships so that you can get things done. Mm -hmm. In your, in your broad study of, uh, of politics and the political process and kind of figuring out where you fall ideologically, I'm wondering, do you have, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better term, a political role model or someone who's, uh, whose previous opinions you really respected and you try to, to model your own uh, policy approach after? Well, in the Senate right now, you know, we've got, you know, some just great people that are here. Um, uh, you know, certainly Senator Inhofe in Oklahoma would be and it's kind of different and different things. Uh, Mike Enzi from Wyoming, you know, does a great job of, of, again, getting things done. Senator Inhofe, a great job of getting things done in regard to uh, public works. Um, uh, Ron Johnson, you know, is another person that's, that's great on the budget. You know, a great example there, continually speaking up, 
which, which we all need to be speaking of, about fiscal responsibility. Uh, he's a, I was a small business person. He had a medium-sized company. Uh, another guy that's come in and filling that role right now is uh, Senator Perdue from Georgia, a new member. He's also on the Ag Committee and, and a Southern Ag, ag guy, but, but again, with a strong business background. So, I, you know, there's just several people out there that uh, really are good examples that we can work with to uh, make things better. And let's let's get out of Washington here for a little bit. When you're when you're back home in Arkansas, uh, I imagine there's a number of things that can happen to keep you busy. But I'm wondering, what's your what's your favorite local uh, stateside tradition that you uh, that you enjoy taking part in back home? Well, I you know I I enjoy uh, I live not too far from a lake, and enjoy going out there when I can. The problem is, uh, the when I can is not very often, uh, but I enjoy that. I, I'm blessed. I've got three grown daughters that are all off my payroll. That's a good thing. And and I've got uh, three daughters. T I had two granddaughters, a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and we finally had a little boy about six months ago. So the grandkids are starting to consume a lot of time, and uh, that's a lot of fun, and uh, it's been a real blessing for my wife and I. Senator John Bozen from the state of Arkansas, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, as always, for having me.